So this is a Valiant 4 transistor tape recorder I got at a thrift store. I paid 20 bucks for it. Um, I, I got it because I mean, it was, it's cool, right? It's it, cheap, I have to say that. Like it's not uh, some high tech kind of thing. It's actually, I haven't looked at the year yet, but it's from the 60s because I have a couple of, it came with five different tapes. Uh, six different tapes, plus actually one that's blank and in box. And there were labels on some of them, and one says birthday 69, um, June 68. That's, what's unique is it came, came with the manual. I love that they give a, a schematic, right? Like that's what, uh, you, <laughs> what percentage of the population, you know, can understand the schematic. Uh, I also love that, uh, hey, four transistor tape recorder not one not two not three but four um it's kind of like megapixels with cameras uh digital cameras like you know big deal right um so i like that it's a four transistor one so like i said it, it came with directions a warranty card a little note the the um six things a blank one which is important because you gotta obviously run it and then this is seemingly a blank one. Right, so I had to pull that out. So it seems like it's likely in use. I don't know that for sure, obviously. 69 cents. Syosset. I lived in Syosset for uh, about a decade. This would have been just down the street from where I lived. Um, also, apparently they sold things like this. So, dear dad, send money in four two-inch sonoramic recording tapes only. So it would have been one, two, three, four. Here's another thing. You know, our son's tape letter, send money in to sonor son sonoramic recording tapes. Um, look at that, 99 cents for two, and this was 99 cents for four. Hmm. This is mostly missing, but you can see that for use with any uh, splicing method. So here's a piece de la resistance. It actually works on a C battery and a nine volt battery. The C battery seems to run the actual whatever things. This seems to run the, the pickup of the sound. So it's hard to get this top off. Um, but there's the head. It's got some, just a couple functions, forward and rewind. Um, the volume. And then you either play or you record. Um, you're going to see in a minute, I was able to get it to play. I was not able to get it to record. Um, the kicker is, though, so when I first saw it, I saw this thing in there. I thought, well, that's some kind of weird auxiliary speaker, but it's not. It's the microphone. I mean, that is, couldn't be cooler. It's got a clip on the back. I don't know, were you clipping that to yourself? So, I, I think it's awesome. Um, again, handy strap so you can walk around town with your awesome eight, uh, reel to reel. So there's the back of it. This is here. Like I said, there's it's weird a little bit. One C battery and then the nine volt. And so the, the battery canister was pretty clean. Or the battery case was pretty clean. So that is it. There are no additional features. There are no extra jacks, no extra inputs, outputs, or anything of the sort. You either play it theoretically record and rewind but um it, it does work you're gonna see that i had some issues with it cleaned it up i got it basically working it's not fantastic but again especially considering all the stuff that i have with it all the different tapes and things and the box and all the other little pieces it's it's a great find I do want to show you that uh, rewind does work. So I did go through and listen to them. Um, they are not earth shattering. Uh, this is a happy birthday one. A uh, bunch of Christian stuff also. Jesus loves you and stuff like that. Um, this is talking about a kitty. 
This one, some Christmas songs, uh, religious songs. This one is uh, some <laughs> kids talking low and screaming and stuff. I don't know. And somebody reading a book, seemingly. A Glimpse of Life 50 years ago. So it's kind of cute. I mean, the quality is horrible. But this is the microphone. So I guess it's probably not surprising. But it is working better. So loading it is pretty straightforward. I haven't listened to this tape yet, so I'm not sure what it will get. But um, you can see it's got three notches. Three notches, so clearly that goes over there. It's kind of snug. You need a blank one, and this particular lot has a blank one. An empty one, I should say, more than blank. I put it over this post. Definitely put it, and I've done it actually both ways with that one, but the, what is important is to put it under this. You can see it's a little bit tricky. So that's under there. All right, so under. Or actually, typically I'll do it over. Definitely between this and this. It has to be between that. It's got a, this is the head that picks up the sound. Then what you're going to do is give yourself a little bit, you know, maybe about this much. That's even probably too much. Pop it into here. So you see how that's kind of stuck? And then I'm just going to hand, oops, I just left it out. Or let it get out, but pop it in. And then start to wind it, hand wind it, pick up the slack. And that should be good to go now. All right. So I'm going to press forward. And, this is, and so again, you got to make sure over here that it's in play. So this switch you don't obviously want on record, you want on play, volume, and now I'm gonna press forward and we'll hear what's on here. Again, I haven't listened to this tape yet. So that was in there backwards and it needed to be rewound. So I did that, I rewound it, I re-hooked it up and we're gonna try again. So it's on play. Okay, so I mean, you can see that it, it does work. The volume isn't great. You get some static from it. Um, I have cleaned it up, uh, meaning I use some deoxit on uh, the volume control, uh, trying to get it to sound better, and it is better than it used to be. But um, that's how it works. And it works, you know, for something that's probably at, what, 69, so 50-some years old. It's... Uh, pretty sweet you probably could do more to make it sound better i don't obviously know the quality of this from the get-go this was obviously a, more of a this is not a top-notch audio uh device so it is what it is and uh again pretty neat though a uh, really kind of cool transistor uh real to real player for a transistor real to real player There's an issue where with static or with the volume, I think. So that's with the volume turned down low. All right, so I have that same exact tape uh, hooked up to a, um, a real, real to a real player. How about that? Um, just to see how the sound would be. So it's it's not as bad as it sounds on uh, the the Valiant. So the tapes themselves, I don't think specifically, are the problem. So I'm gonna try to open this up and uh, get some deep 
deoxid on the, um, the volume control to see if that might help. So this is the back of the machine. Um, it does have the battery cover, but I just have it off for now. Uh, I'm gonna take out the nine volt and the C battery, and then I'm gonna start with unscrewing one, two, three, and four to see if I can get the back off to see what I, if I can get access to that volume. So I got a bit of a problem. I am not sure where to spray the deoxid. Often with a potentiometer, with a volume control, there's a little slot that you can spray into, but there's no such thing here that I am seeing. All right, so I've removed those two screws. This just comes up. And what I saw is that there's still no access. Um, I know there's a little space right there, but that's just to the bottom side of the plat case. So what I'm gonna do, hope this isn't a bad idea, but remove this white knob. All right, so that was easy enough to remove. But there's this disc here. And so I've loosened this disc already with my screwdriver and I'm going to put this face up in case that matters and now I have access not that I see any um, uh, amazing amount of corrosion on it um, what I'm going to use is deoxit d-series d5 improves electronic connections and basically what it says to do is to turn off the equipment um, and then apply a short burst operate the device to help break it up. So I'm gonna you know, just uh, hit the volume button back and forth a bunch of times, which means I'll have to try to put this thing back on. And then uh, let it sit. It says, wait a few seconds and reapply one short burst. Wait two minutes before turning on the equipment. So let me try that. It's a bit cleaner. It's, I mean, it is cleaner. Um, and when I turn this, it turns easier. So let me reassemble it and see if it's going to work any better. All right, so I got it back together. I don't have a tape in yet. And it's still doing the same thing. I'm going to try cleaning the, the tape head. So I have some 91% isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. I'm going to try to clean the head. I'd rather not obviously take it out. So turn in the Q-tip, as I do it that way, if I'm picking up dirt, I'm not grinding that back in. Let's see. So, not much in terms of grime or dirt, so it might not do anything, but let me do a little bit more. All right, so I'm going to try again. I don't have a terrible amount of hope because, again, it was not dirty. Uh, there was a little bit, but not much. Um, I went back in, I cleaned uh, the potentiometer again, I took the, the, the white knob off inside and really got in there with a Q-tip to clean off the inside of the pot and there's less static now for sure. It's still not super loud, though there's one point I was listening to a little bit ago and it was much louder. Mm. So it seems to be a little bit better.